can speak into this this 30 days that is coming and one of the things that we want to achieve in the 30 days is to this, this coming 30 days we want to learn God's plan for our life we want to pray ourselves into the plan of God uh, if there is much you think about yourself is just to be sufficient or to have sufficiency as a person and a family maybe that is what you think so much you will have enough money a place to dwell the kids are getting to school uh, according to that is enough and the but God thinks bigger for us and the plans of God for us involve the life of others every time God thinks about anybody he thinks generation he thinks a generation he thinks people that are dwelling in our environment he thinks how these people are reached he thinks how to if you look at anybody that God has ever called Anybody that has served God, when I say call, you know, some of us might uh, remove ourselves from that bracket. But when I talk about a call, any every believer is a call to be. Every believer has a call, every person. And the big responsibility that we have, the big responsibility that we have as the children of God, just like in a family, you know, when you're in a family, you're not thinking just about yourself. Your parents are there, your siblings are there. If there is somebody or a, a brother or a sister who is not succeeding, my shakin and opposite, it is a, is, is a concern for everybody there. You can't just watch your brother or your sister go astray or lose network or no. Now, you people as a family, you can come and sit down and discuss. What can we do? The family of God is big. The family of God entails the whole world. The family of God entails the whole, every people that is around you. It's God who made them all. And every time that uh, God thinks about the earth, he's thinking about everybody here. He's thinking about everybody. So it has to become our concern. Whatever concerns God has to concern us. We have to think about it. And uh, what is it? Now he's calling, when he calls, this is what he says. I think this is uh, the verse I first read. Chapter number, f chapter number 46 of the book of, of Isaiah. Isaiah 46 verse 9 and 10. The Bible says, <clears throat> I'll read in KJV. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. My counsel, that talks about purpose. My purpose shall stand, and I will do all my pleasures. Whatever pleases me, I will do. He says it. Whatever pleases me, I will do. In other words, he has a, a purpose that he has set. And then he says, I declare the end from the, from the beginning. In other words, he has a plan for the time that is there. And in that time, there is something you want to achieve. It's God. We are talking about God. He created time. 
time was not there before. When we came on earth, he created time. And then he says, I declare the end from the, from the beginning. So he has intention of achieving something within that time. Within that purpose. Sorry, within that specific period, that duration of time, he has something to achieve. That's why he says, I declare that. And now the question is this. Do you fit into his plan to make us happen what he wanted to happen in the period of time that he's talking about? I believe in this one month that we're talking about. You know, July we began the other day. We call it the month of prevailing prayer. You prayed. Now, today is 38. The 40 days of we are ending our, our prayer that we began the 28th of June. And we see we are praying until the end of June. Now, another season is coming. Yeah? Another period of time that we want to see God achieve something through our, our prayers. So he has something to to achieve through each one of our lives. When he called uh, Jeremiah, what did he, did he tell him? Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Thank God Jeremiah discovered early this thing. And he became what God told him. And then he God told him, whatever you pull down, is pulled down. Whatever you uproot, yeah, nobody can plant it back. You find the things that you have pulled down, he says nobody will build it back. Whatever you uproot, and whatever you plant, or you build, nobody can remove. That is powerful. This man is just a young person, 17 years old, when the word is coming to him. I don't know. Today, when, when we go to meet, in the Bible, you see 17, Joseph, John, David, 17, Joseph, 17, Mary, 14. So I don't know in our time, <laughs> when do people get to know the real call of God or what God expects them to achieve in their time and generation. But when, when you do, because when you, be, when you discover it, then implementation, your time on this earth will not be a waste to God. There are many believers who are in the church, but their time on earth is a waste to God. God cannot express them, himself through them. Because their mind is not given to him, to him. Their time has not been given to him. So somebody, all somebody is thinking is what to eat and drink. And how to take his kids to school. Hmm? They are not thinking about his kingdom. They are not thinking about how God can take over our environment. Like look at Mansa Beach. We are very far. I to Kombani. I look at... <laughs> Some other towns and ministries. And I look at Marsabit. Atujamuka. Tukutuka usingizi. Laki nani ya taomba. Mabu ya badilike. Who will pray? Who will pray for things to change? Who will stand in the gap and cause the house of God to flourish? This kind of prayer that we make every morning is important. Very important. Very important. The big question you need to ask yourself is this now. Now that you're in Marsabi town, I tell this one to my people come to lunch hour. Are you only here to make profit? <laughs> now, if you ask God, I also discovered this. Many at times we are outside his will and we are just busy running after our things. And then God encounters us. Saul was running after a lost donkey. You know what happened? He met God and God told him, this is why I created you. You will become a king. Yeah. 
many people in the Bible, they were not really looking for God. They were just busy. I was busy running. You must be careful. I went to Kakamega. Busy looking for education to run. Only to meet God there and things turn around. Huh? All of us, even being here at this time in this morning, God would want to accomplish something through our lives. And one of the things that God requires, why God requires your availability in the place of prayer, is so that you will use your words to change the environment that you are in. Jesus became, God became a human being. Because human being cannot do whatever God wanted. So when Jesus came, he put on flesh. He, he is the will of God expressed in human body. God himself. And when he came physically here, whatever he was thinking of doing when he was there, before he came here, he accomplished. Now that he left, he expects us to accomplish his plan for our life. That's why it is good to ask, why am I alive? Number two, why am I in this geographical environment? Open my eyes so that I know. And then I live according to it. We have the Holy Spirit as we have read yesterday. Who can cause us to know what God is up to with our life. Who can avail to us all that we need to cause whatever God has asked us to do. I don't want to speak so much today. I want us to pray the next 40 minutes. The next 40 minutes. But the prayer item should be this. Reveal your plan to my life. Uh, your plan for my life. And help me leave it in my time and generation. Yesterday I was speaking at a barrier site in the area chapter number 5 of 2 Corinthians. From verse 1 to Bible says, this body one day will be dissolved, this body, and we are going to be given heavenly body. And then we know when we are present in this body, we are absent from the Lord. When we are absent from here, we are present. We are absent here, we are not born again from the same body. And then the, what, one thing that the Bible says that, that is very powerful, it says, be mindful of what you do while you are in this body because one day you are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ so that you will be paid or judged for whatever things you do in this body. The Bible says where bad, whether bad or good, he says. It's very easy to teach, to speak to people who are burying others. <laughs> Telling them that. Come back to your mind. Yeah. Come back to your senses. Be mindful of what you are coming out. Yeah. yeah. So, I want us to pray. Let's pray. Let's pray the remaining 